not just for right now, our focus is on the next generation. Right. The sad thing about poverty, poverty in our community mm -hmm. is the fact that pretty much guaranteed if you're poor today mm -hmm. and you don't have the support mm -hmm. or people with expectations in your home, right. that child is going to be in poverty, mm -hmm. the next generation, they're going to raise kids in poverty, and we continue this vicious cycle, which I believe there is a solution for every problem. Mm -hmm. Hello, this is Barbara Dean Franklin. Welcome to my channel. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show, Real Talk, Real People. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin, and today I have the pleasure of sitting with my friend, Cheryl P. Johnson, CEO of COTS. How are you doing today? I am great, Barbara. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule mm -hmm. to come in and talk to me. Uh, today I want to talk about COTS, the you know temporary uh, coalition of temporary uh, shelters. I want to kind of talk about homelessness, mm -hmm. what it looked like when you first started or when COTS first opened their doors. Mm -hmm. And uh, COTS opened their doors like how many years ago? It was over 30 years, so 1982. Wow. That's when you first started. And in 1982, uh, Cheryl, how, what did homelessness look like? So in the city, particularly in the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. which I think reflects the nation, you, you saw majority single men okay. um, who had issues with alcohol, maybe some drugs, but generally alcohol okay. was the issue um, um, out on the streets. So when COTS uh, came together, it was a group of ministers, uh, people in the community, mm -hmm. um, other organizations who really saw this as a growing issue and problem in the city of Detroit okay. and, and how do we combat it so that we care for the human being. Right. So COT started with, I believe it was 22, maybe 44 beds mm -hmm. over at the uh, St. Peter's Episcopal Church right across from the old Tiger Stadium right. okay. in the basement there. Okay. And um, um, as time went on, that, uh, the face of the homeless, Change, change drastically right. to what you see today, and 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 that's where where um you know I want to go because because today um, we have homelessness and you think about like what does homelessness really look like because you have the working home that's right so so many people um are working many have uh, jobs that what we call un the livable making livable wages all right so today. In, in our, our state. And so some people, you know, ask the question like, oh, you got plenty of housing mm -hmm. in Detroit. And that is not true. Right. You don't have affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So what has continued to happen, and we see this now at COTS, mm -hmm is this growing number of families um, that are coming in. So, so this could be mom, dad, children, or single mom okay. um, in many um, cases. And that, unfortunately, um, is what's happening across the country. Right. And, and with, you know, as I listen to you and we talk about the, you know, the dynamics of families today, because now, too, we have a lot of grandparents that are raising children, you know, yeah. that are falling on uh, really hard times. And you, so you have temporary homelessness, you mm -hmm. know, so if they just placed by, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then you have those that are just in and out of homelessness. Mm -hmm. They've been chronic. Yes, yes. Yep. Okay. And 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 so what I think about it, and I think I I thank God for cots mm -hmm. and you know all the things that you mm -hmm. do, and hopefully we'll get a chance to hit on some mm -hmm. of it because it's just not the homeless you know that you address. You, you're doing so many other things as well. But as as our government, you know, are we doing enough to really help the people? Who yeah. are so, so everybody is so easy to point the finger yeah, like this. Well, you're not doing enough. You should be doing right. this. And I, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, I'll speak very candidly mm -hmm. about it. I always point to the church, to, to okay. be honest with you. I, I, I say in this day and age, um, sometimes we ought to be ashamed okay. <laughs> as Christian folks because um, in our world, um, Christ should be the head, the Most leader, right? Definitely. And our nation should reflect that. Mm -hmm. So as we look at our society, mm -hmm. 
I mean, the, the reflection of Christ is very dim. Okay. So, so I always go back, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Well, churches, what are what are we doing as Christian folk? Here? And you know what? That 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 is a good thing. But I I do most of the work outside of my church. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm out spreading the good news mm -hmm. and helping and loving on people and encouraging them. And right. when you talk about it, there's a church almost on every corner. Every, four on every corner. <laughs> okay. And, and, yep. and you are so right because yep. if there's nothing else that we open up the doors and put a cot in. That's right. You know, because that's how we were yes, raised, you know, right. back in the day when I was coming up, we all supported yeah. and took care of one another. Yeah. And that's what I talk about each and every week on this show is about supporting one another. Yeah. loving one another you know being there for each other that's but right. how do we get back to that that's I mean right. how do you you know when the, the preachers are up there and they're preaching every yeah. Sunday but you know as we are you know as we're talking every Sunday when yeah. we come in there and we're preaching to the people that are sick and we're trying to encourage them yeah. and we're giving them the word and we're telling them what thus said the Lord what are we really doing because we can't number one can't go out into the community until we help that's right. The house. Yeah. And, and you're right about that. When, when you uh, were talking, it made me think in, in Acts, it talks about the people had everything in common. Mm -hmm. And here's why they had everything in common. It was because they saw a need. Right. And if I had a resource they and could. you had a need, so it's not okay to sit in church. And this mm -hmm. is the case mm -hmm. where we actually sit in church and the person next to you is hungry. Most or this person over here has another need. Yes. And prayer is good. I believe it is a key to the kingdom. Mostly. I got that. <laughs> However, some oh people, God. it's beyond the prayer. Mm -hmm. It's what do Help. you do about that? Right. And so that's our responsibility. And okay. I think um, the church has really fallen asleep. Yeah. And, and I'm going to totally agree with yeah. you on that. And I truly wish that, you know, as a community, uh, a com especially a community of faith, that we will sit together mm -hmm. and not worry about which one starts the program That's that right. is most effective, but we all right. come together yeah. as a community and start a program right. that will address the needs of the people Absolutely. that will help somebody today. Right. I mean, we need to do this right now. Yeah. You know, now we need to do it. So let's go back and talk about COTS because mm -hmm. COTS, you're down at 26 Peterborough. Is that where you are? You 26 Peterborough. Mm -hmm. We moved from St. Peter's Episcopal okay. um, and there was the old Imperial Arms Hotel. Okay. Uh, has a lot of history there, eight stories. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got that facility, it was literally burned out. So the renovation happened floor by floor okay. um, to what you have today. That's wow. our headquarters, okay. but we have other yeah, um, and, properties. And that's what yep. I wanted to talk about because when you talk about COTS, you know, the first time that I came down, donated some clothes, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, that's what I thought that yeah. it was. As a matter of fact, I was in there with Frankie, uh -huh. and that's when I came in to, you know, yeah. to interview for being on the committee for yep. leading ladies, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. But, you know, there's a wall, and she was showing me the different yep. locations and the different things that you do. So let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. about some of your other locations and what the dynamics of, you know, what you're yeah. get, what you guys are doing in those different locations. Yeah. So um, at our headquarters, we have 140 beds okay. for men, women, and children. And mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit about how that's going to be right. um, transitioning later on. Yes. Um, but we also realize that some people are homeless and need additional support, right? right? So there is a, what we call transitional services where okay. people move, um, if you're single, mm -hmm. we have a site um, there at uh, 26 Peterborough, but we have other sites, um, Peggy's Place, which Peggy. is one of my favorite right. places, a, over like by that. Mary Grove okay. um, College. Mm -hmm. um, we also have 23 scattered um, units for women who are survivors of domestic violence. And we all know, um, especially in the city of Detroit yes. and Wayne County, there is a huge need yes. um, for, for housing and services for those survivors. And then we have um, other housing. We have um, Cats on the Boulevard, mm -hmm. another um, building okay. for families um, that are in transition. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the major part of what COTS does is permanent supportive housing. Right. So sometimes you look at the name COTS, people automatically think temporary. temporary right. But um, permanent housing mm -hmm. um, for us becomes the, if you want to look at it, at closing that back door. Exactly. So there are some people 
who are going to need support services for the rest of their lives. Uh -huh. Normally people with mental health challenges, mm -hmm. some physical challenges, mm -hmm. and what they need, you know, those are the people that have been chronic in right. and out of homelessness mm -hmm. because they didn't have the supportive services, the coaching, the mentoring mm -hmm. to help them remain stably housed. Right. So we have over 250 um, units of those um, hours that we actually own and have built and then scattered throughout okay. Wayne County. Wow. See, now I wonder how many people, yeah. you know, just don't know that. Yeah. And, and then the, the other thing, you know, and I don't want to go from, you know, from because that's awesome, all mm -hmm. the things that you're doing. But w as I go back into that uh, interview, you mm -hmm. know, with Frankie, and she takes me into the, is it Bright Beginning? Yes. That's my favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I yeah. you know, I go through the kitchen where the, you yeah. know, we feed, and mm -hmm. then she walks me over, and, you know, she uh, taps lightly on the door. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect. You know, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in a homeless shelter, yeah. and I walk behind this door, and then there's soft music playing, and there may be, like, five little babies that are sitting, Swinging, and, yeah. and their little swings are, you yeah. know, kind of rocking, and they're asleep. Yeah. And then there's a lady, you know, and I, I don't know her name, but mm -hmm. I saw her when I came to family. I was like, you're the lady that was holding the baby. Yeah. You know, she's holding the baby, but they're all quiet. Yep, yep. And then there are other babies that are in their cribs, and the lady, yeah. and they're loving on these babies. And I'm thinking, like, how do they get them all to be quiet <laughs> at the same time? But I do know one thing that I felt the peace yes. and the love. Said they're working their gift. <laughs> exactly. Everybody has the gift. And That's their exactly. gift. Exactly. As yeah. I walked in that room, yeah. it just consumed me to yeah. tears. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I actually, tears were yeah. running down my face. And I'm thinking, wow, this is awesome. So yeah. who's able to, I mean, because you're not just, uh, watching the homeless children that are there, you yeah. still uh, provide a need for yeah. working people in the area. Yeah, right? ab absolutely. So when people look at homelessness, they're, you know, at, at the core is poverty, okay. right? So the core is poverty. People are poor. Yes. And we, we oftentimes you know, look at, focus at one aspect of it. But mm -hmm. we can ever focus on the fact that poverty exists in our city mm -hmm. at, to an extent that is just ridiculous mm -hmm. and begin to address all the issues because it's very complex. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a poor person that, that comes into COTS, mm -hmm. Um, so you may have some physical disability because you aren't focusing on your health. Right. Um, you aren't focusing on the kids' education because you are you poor need, and you don't have a, a, a roof thing. over your head. Right. And so what we do is begin, to, you know, we start to look at what types of services are needed while you are here. Mm -hmm. So we want people to first be safe. Yes. We want them to be well fed. Yeah. And because they come with children, you cannot take care of your business. Mm -hmm. You cannot go looking for housing. You cannot really work if you have children right. that, and you don't have a place, place where they can be cared for. So yeah. Bright Beginnings was created as a result mm -hmm. of one of our board members saying, what about the children? Right. I remember in the board <laughs> meeting, he said, what about the children? Okay. And we began to watch and saw that we saw that there was a growing number of, of ch children mm -hmm. coming into COTS. So what do we do right, about it? And right. so from that, um, 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 the Illages and Mitch Album mm -hmm. um, and some others, the Carl's Foundation came together and many donors right. to help us create this safe, and it is a great place, it is, um, it Bright really Beginnings. Is. And then we have another daycare for children two and a half to six over at Peggy's Place. Okay. And I know I was just at an event earlier in Gross Point mm -hmm. where the Sarnix, is mm -hmm. that Dr. Yeah. and Mrs. Yes. Sarnix, uh, their um, starting an, an endowment, endowment right. you know, that for is it. great for yeah. us to, to have um, people who really understand mm -hmm. those dynamics. And if you listen to um, Dr. Sarnak, you will hear his story of, of living yes. um, in, in poverty himself right. and in how do you, you know, raise yourself up, but mm -hmm. also with support because right. it's not all up about pulling your own bootstraps. Right, exactly. And when I heard that story where he talked about, I don't know if it was 15, 11 families yes. all one, in one little yeah. place, but they all took care of each other. That's they all right. looked out for each other. That's they right. didn't just get ahead and then yes. just leave everybody else in that's poverty. Right. They made sure. And that's what we lack. Absolutely. You know, that's Absolutely. what we lack. And especially as African-American mm -hmm. people, if I could just say that yes. we lack helping one another. You know, Absolutely. I think that your competition to me when really your collaboration. That's right. You know, you are somebody right. that I need to speak 
speak to, right. you know, I need to listen to, you know, because I see right. your successes that I want to know how to be successful. That's right. Your audience may not be my audience, yeah. you know, so there's enough to go around. I can learn from mm -hmm. you. I don't have to be intimidated by That's you, right. afraid of you, you know. My arms are wrapped, you know, mm -hmm. around you. I'm supporting you, yeah. you support me. There may be We something. go up together. Yes. That's how you most, look at it. We go up definitely, together. Most definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know that uh, there's the endowment. I know the leading lady. Let's talk about what that uh, fundraiser mm -hmm. is for. So, so leading lady started um, mm -hmm. with um, Yvette Bing, okay. uh, who was the honorable Bing's wife, who is, right. and she um, had just a thought about how do we do something with cots. Right. And so um, we worked with her to do the breakfast. It started mm -hmm. out with a hundred women, and it's been growing yeah. since then. Actually, it was a luncheon, and it's just an amazing time. You know, something about the power of women. Yeah. Period. That that when we come together, <laughs> and and uh, we can do amazing things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, it, it started from there. And so now we, we have this great dynamic breakfast yeah. um, every year. And it's a good hour and a half, mm -hmm. hour and a half, where women come together. And we focus on a very specific um, um, topic for um, the, the event. And this year it's around our transition to families. Right. So we, we're really looking at um, hosting about 300 women right. um, and having a lot of fun. I'm excited about uh, it, you know, empowering and vision, you know, to enlighten, you yep. know, one another on the things, the power of women. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I have a, a nonprofit. I say it all the time. Women empowered yep. crossing paths. That's right. When our paths yep. cross, when we lock on, yeah. you know, there are some things I may not be able to do by myself, yeah. but when my sister is behind me, yeah. you know, if I have somebody that I know that supports me, it. then I'm courageous. Mm -hmm. You know, I have more courage that's than right. I do, you know, on my own. And so yeah. that's something that we all uh, definitely need to do. And so when you talk about changing the, the dynamics mm -hmm. of COTS, you're mm -hmm. looking to uh, just specifically be for Family. So, so, and, and sometimes when, when I say that, I'm very careful about very. it because uh, we have several different tiers of, of housing, the shelter, transitional, and permanent housing. And right now, our focus is transitioning the emergency shelter. So okay. in January of 2015, okay. we'll be transitioning to, to families. And here's why, because you always believe, you know, when people say, well, people are homeless. So if you have resources of that much mm -hmm. and you have a need like this, right. My response is always, where can I have the greatest impact? Okay. Where can I have the greatest impact? And okay. here's what I believe. With our families, and not just for right now, our focus is on the next generation. Right. The sad thing about poverty, poverty in our community mm -hmm. is the fact that pretty much guaranteed, if you're poor today mm -hmm. and you don't have the support mm -hmm. or people with expectations in your home, right. That child is going to be in poverty. The mm -hmm. next generation, they're going to raise kids in poverty. And we continue this vicious cycle, which I believe there is a solution for every problem. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a friend of mine says, we are a yes organization. Oh, I believe, yes, we can, we can address we can it. it. Yeah. And it's not just COTS, but how do we collaborate with others? So what we do very well is we get people housed. Right. We do that well. So... If I can do this, and we're focusing on four other tenants, um, education, yes. health and well-being, being healthy, um, not employment, but career development, All right. and then how do we in engage um, ourselves in the community and in education, mm -hmm. That those we believe are the five core tenets right. for how we move ourselves out of poverty mm -hmm. and that when a child sees a mom and, and you hear me say mom because most of our families are headed by a single mm -hmm. mom right? right so when mom is going to school mm -hmm. mom is focused on her health and right. her well-being mom feels good about mom feels mom. good about mom. the children see mom feeling good she sets an expectation exactly. the kids see it right. and they repeat we repeat mm -hmm. what we, we see, see. Exactly. and so we believe that with, with that culture that way of thinking that if we as an organization will embrace that and we are embracing that mm -hmm. then and working with others that we can down the road when that same child who is five right. is 18 mm -hmm. their conversation is very different most definitely that's that's really really good and I know you have a lot of people that are behind you that mm -hmm. support you that collaborate with COTS. COTS is a 
definitely a great organization. Yeah, it you is know. a great place. Oh, I love it. It, it, it is. Over, <laughs> 24 years strong for I me. I, say, I love you know, it. I know you've been there for yeah. a while. So let's talk a little bit about Shayro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shayro <laughs> Johnson. And, and tell me this, because I have my idea about why they call you Shayro, but tell me where it's it came from. It's just a nickname. Mm -hmm. it, it was my nickname when I came to Cods, mm -hmm. you know, in college, you know, you grow up and okay. everybody has a nickname. Mm -hmm. They might call you Barb. I don't know. Yeah, it's, Bob, it's whatever. Yeah. Yes. It's a nickname. And and when I became the CEO, uh -huh. I had to, you know, my name is Cheryl, and I had to write my name as Cheryl. There's, uh -huh. there's a legal documents that right. I signed. So I said, let me just keep the Cheryl. And as my mother, who's 85 today, would tell you, I named you Cheryl. Okay, so, that's so, your name. But people, my friends, call me Cheryl. Cheryl. I okay. answered it both. But but <laughs> see, and when I when I they you know I heard Frankie say Cheryl, uh -huh. you know, and I, and I met you, yeah. and when I left, when I walked away, yeah. I said, oh, she, that's my Cheryl. <laughs> So okay. I'm thinking that that's, yeah. you know, maybe no. that's not where the name came no. from. Well, hey, it's a good yeah, thing. it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a real good yeah. thing. So you've been with Cos for 24 years. 24 where, years. Where, where, what were you doing before you? So be, before um, that, I was working. So I've always been in the helping field. Okay. So as a child, I remember volunteering, getting up mm -hmm. every Saturday to work with um, children. Mom and dad didn't have to wake me up. It okay. was just, it, that, so do, that's naturally. my gifting. Most. And that's what was put in my heart. Mm -hmm. And so um, I I've always, I've worked with teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, I've done that for a number of years, 10 years before I came to COTS. Okay. And so I came to COTS and I never worked with homeless mm -hmm. uh, people, but um, my intent was to be there two years <laughs> and go back to working with teens. Okay. And the rest, the rest is history. Is history yeah. right. <laughs> and I know how that is. Yep. After 36 years at uh, uh, AT&T, yep. Michigan Bell, SBC, you yes. know, whatever. I'm only going to be here for a little while, yep. you know, because I had something else to do. Yeah. And, and it's good. It, it it's, is. you know, God has, to me, um, he, he purposes um, us and he puts things in our hearts that even though we aren't aware Most that okay here is where he's leading me once you get in it mm -hmm. oh you get it like well, oh in it. okay yes, here yes, I am. yes so now I know that um, one of the things that uh, they share with me is that like you took is it seven women up under you or a few women yeah, yeah. and you kind of do some coaching you are yeah, a life so, coach? so th this started um, a few years ago I was really blessed to get um, funded um, through McGregor Fund who's mm -hmm. a major uh, foundation in our city doing some good work mm -hmm. and support um, they um, uh, allowed me to go away for a year and a half on oh, sabbatical wow. um, and it was the most amazing <laughs> opportunity <laughs> okay. that really set in motion mm -hmm. um, my coaching so you know I've been coaching people for years, but not calling it coaching, coaching right? You, yes, you, you just supporting and you mm -hmm. see it, mm -hmm. but you don't call it. So I actually went away and became um, certified mm -hmm. as an um, integral life coach. Mm -hmm. And so it, aside from COTS, I, I have my own client base where I work mm -hmm. primarily with women, but Mm -hmm. with people um, around helping them to one, see the vision, mm -hmm. um, address particular issues in their lives and, and helping them to create a pathway okay. to whatever the next narrative right. is that they want to create. So I, I wanted to do this for women who couldn't afford to pay what the clients pay, right? right. So, um, and I really believe coaching is a tool that everybody should get a coach. Well, it is, it's, no, it's just right. everybody. Like coaches I have coach. a coach. A coach needs a coach. And um, honestly, it, it, so I decided to, how do I offer this to women um, who are living in, in some of our programs? Right. That turned out to be one I of, heard. to this day, the okay. most amazing um, experience that I have had in my life to, mm. to work with women. So you kind of, you think, like, okay, these are poor women with all kinds of issues, right. but at their heart, they really right. want to be the best that exactly. they can be, not only for themselves, but for their kids. Exactly. That was that was just well, like, wow. Who wakes up in the morning and say, you don't want to be a bad mother? Absolutely. Who wakes up and say, I want to be homeless? Yeah. I, I want to do this, yeah. you know? And I, I know for yes. a fact, you know, yes. from all the things that I've been through yeah. in my life, all I've ever wanted to do was be the best person that Absolutely. I could be. You know, and to love people, have people to yeah. love me in return for that yeah. to be reciprocal. And just to do good, you That's know? That's right. So I, I, you know, I'm grateful. One thing I want to do is I want to give out for you to give out Cots number if mm -hmm. somebody is experiencing some homelessness they need to talk to somebody yep. about how to you know transition 
give give us your uh, number. So our number is 313-831-3777, uh, and we have a website, um, COTS, C-O-T-S, Detroit. So that's one word, COTSDetroit.org. Right. And then the next thing that I want you to do, because, you know, a half hour is never enough mm -hmm. time. We are definitely going to have to, you know, do some follow up, you know, mm -hmm. to sit down and talk about some other things. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody out there, somebody's going through something, somebody, you know, just don't know how they can make it through. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their dream is, what their situation is, yeah. but I just want you to look into their camera mm -hmm. and encourage somebody today. Yeah. So, so my, um, I think what, what is just on my heart, and, and this is something that I've been really focusing on and, and sharing is um, to understand um, our gifts and our purposes that God has always um, place a specific purpose uh, for you in mind. And even though we may not understand uh, what that purpose is, believe it or not, that if we really focus, and I believe there are a couple of things that we can do is dig into the word, um, pray and spend time um, in silence that God does speak. So uh, people often say, well, what does he sound like? I cannot <laughs> even tell you, you know, that uh, audible voice, right. but God speaks to us through our passion. He speaks um, to us through other people, but every time you wake up in the morning, he is saying something to you. The thing is we've gotten so um, busy with all the other stuff and even our own doubts that we can't hear God speak. Listen, God is speaking and he is directing and there is a next step for you. Well, I thank you for that. Yeah, I thank God for the day that our paths crossed. I remember you and I sitting in a meeting together. I said, what is this meeting about? And we both said, we didn't uh -oh. know. <laughs> but just as you just spoke, yeah. you know, about when God has something for yeah. you, that person that you're to meet, that yeah. opportunity, you know, he's going to always make room Absolutely. for you and your gifts, you know. Yeah. So I thank you for coming out and you, taking Barbara. the time and sitting here with me and just sharing your wisdom, your knowledge. Um, you know, if anybody out there is experiencing homelessness, there is help, you know, mm -hmm. and I know that there um, is a probably an overcrowded situation, mm -hmm. but you know that people can talk you through what it is that you need to do. And I think that, you know, going to the next level as you transition to go to the next level, maybe the churches will hear us yes. and they will put some shelters around mm -hmm. to help. Yes. you know, all the things that you do. So um, I'm going to have to end the show, Thanks. you know, the way that I always do. Um, uh, thanking my audience, my viewing audience, and hopefully, you know, we share some information with you that will be a blessing to you. And I'm going to tell you from my beating heart to your beating heart, I love you. You understand? Okay. <laughs>